I mean, basically, that's it. That was the history. So let me tell you about the DJ. Because, you know, in disco, when you go out to a club, the most important person in the club is the DJ. He's the guy who plays all the music, usually controls the lights. You know, he also uh, controls the the whole atmosphere of the club by the music that he plays is very important. You know, he plays, he controls the tempo of the music. When you play slow, slow music, people dance. Yes, they dance together close, but if you play the fast, fast music at 12, one o'clock at night, this is the club, okay? So the DJ was the most important guy. And in the beginning, he was the guy who hired and fired the MCs. The MCs would just basically that what we did as rappers in the beginning was we carried the equipment for the DJ, right? And we set it up. Then at the end of the night, when everybody goes home, we take down the equipment, break it down, and take it back to the house. And the MCs did it so that they could get in free to the club and talk to the girls. You know, that was our job. Huh? <clears throat> so, um, in the beginning, we were just like very, very low on the totem pole and, and, and they have this saying in America, we say we were a dime a dozen. So every neighborhood had an MC and the DJ was the boss. So he was the focal point. And then after the years came by, you know, the MC got the opportunity to do more than just carry the equipment or make announcements and stuff like that. You know, we would just get on the microphone and say, hello everybody, welcome to the club tonight. Uh, we're gonna have a good time tonight. And then it, it evolved, the evolution of the MC evolved to where we, we became more of entertainers uh, because the DJ would play break beats. And that's a whole nother different story, the evolution of the DJ. He went from playing just one song to playing the break within that song and putting it together and having break beats. That's a whole different lesson. I could talk a half hour about that, but just, um, just know that there was an evolution from the DJ and an evolution from the MC and it eventually the records started coming out and I was one of the first guys to make a record. <clears throat> like Sugar Hill Gang, um, and Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. We got the opportunity to record our rap, our MCing skills on a record. And that was when hip hop exploded and blew up and everyone around the world started to hear rapping and, you know, hip hop on the records. And that's what made the MC become the boss and not the DJ. Der, hvor vi kom fra sidst, det var der, hvor DJ'en har begyndt at spille de der andre sange i stedet for diskomusik. Og på den måde, så var han boss, og de der MC's, det var folk, der bare hans ting. Hver gang han skulle sætte arrangementer op, så tog de alle hans ting med, satte det op, og da det var færdigt, så tog de med. Og så begyndte de også, og for eksempel når han spiller plader, så der stod de for eksempel i start arrangement eller slutning arrangement og arrangement de 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 fyrer bare nogle ting jeg prøver at få folk til at komme op og køre det var ikke sådan noget med at de rappede over det så snakkede han om at på et tidspunkt så DJ han gik fra at spille bare en plade til efter de fandt på det der med at scratch og sådan noget at have to plader og kun spille en lille del af en sang og putte trommer på og sådan noget det er udvikling DJ han gjorde samtidig med MC MC det det rapper ne han udviklede sig også fra at bare kun at introducere folk og bære ting til os og begyndte at rap selv. Og så han var en af de første rapper, der begyndte at rap selv og fik mulighed for at indspille. Nu alle sammen kan gå på deres computer og, og lave en sang og putte det på MySpace. Men dengang før i tiden, der var der ikke alle, der havde adgang til studiet. Så det, var, det var dyrt, og det, det var ikke en værd, der bare kunne komme og bare have penge til at gå i studiet. Så han var en af de første, der fik, der fik mulighed for at udgive en plade sammen med nogle af de andre, han også fortalte om. Øh, med Sugar Hill Gang og nogle af de andre. Men han var en af de første, der fik lov. Og, og, fra der, hvor, de, hvor rapperne begyndte, eller 
hip hopperne begynder at udgive plader, så begynder øh, MC'erne og rapperne også at begynde at få mere magt, fordi når du spiller en plade, selvfølgelig hører du musik, men du hører også ham rapperen, så hvis han har en historie at fortælle, så er det ham, der er i fokus. Og Ray han snakkede om, at det hele startede med, at først kom DJ'en, var ham, der styrede det hele, så, så var det rapperne, der begyndte at få al magten, og nu er det de små sanger, ligesom Justin Bieber og sådan noget, der begyndte at få mere magt, fordi det er dem, det, er dem, det handler om, det er dem, der svinger, det er dem, der har tekster og sådan noget. Within that history, okay, of hip hop, the most important thing that I have to offer to you guys is the story of my life. Now, when I first started, there was so much competition. There were rappers, every neighborhood had their own DJ. Every neighborhood had their own rapper. So here I am, I'm saying, well, how can I compete? How can I, you know, get famous? How can I do this? So. What I did was I went to school and got an education. I went to college. Straight out of high school, went to college, and I majored in a field that would give me an advantage. I knew they weren't going to college, you know. We were all street kids. So I went to college and I majored in communications, which was a field that's relative to hip hop. The, the, the rapper is an orator. He speaks, he's a public speaker. And when I went to college was the best thing I ever did because I, I found out there are so many different things that you can do in hip hop. Like the DJ can go from being a DJ to being an engineer in the studio, then being a producer. And then, you know, he can go from that. The graffiti artist can open up his own studio and then teach kids. He can be a teacher. You know, the MC has so many avenues, things that they can do. They can go into journalism, go into broadcasting, they can get on the radio, you can uh, uh, be a public speaker, you know, you can be in politics. All of these things, folks, the spoken word is so very important. When you're a rapper, you have so many different avenues of fields of jobs, you know. This whole thing, hip hop prepares us for the rest of our lives, you know. It gives us the talent and it gives us, you know, the the inspiration to further our lives and go into different different areas of of uh, of uh, you know, work. So the fact that I went to school set me apart from everyone else. As you're a rapper and you're writing your rhymes, you need to know English. Or if you're rapping, you know, in in, in Danish, you need to know perfect Danish in order for you to put your rhymes together. You know, you have to know how to speak clearly. You know, you're a public speaker. So speech is so very important. You need to take speech classes in order to know how to speak from the diaphragm and where everybody can hear you down the room if you have to raise your voice. It's not talking from the throat. It's talking from the diaphragm. You know what I mean? It's a different, total different uh, style of rapping and, 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 and a skill that will set you apart from everybody else. Everyone always say, oh, Curtis Blow, he has the loudest voice. He's a little guy, but he has a big mouth, you know? But it's because I speak from the diaphragm and I learned that in school. The words that you put together when you're writing, you're, you know, you have to know how to write. It's poetry, it's poetry in motion. So all of these things I learned in school and it gave me so much of an advantage over everyone else that was coming up during that time. So this is why I say education is so very important. Even when you're, when you're talking sports, when you're talking football, there is a science to football. The most intelligent football players, the guys who do the research and learn about the history. You know, you're watching Pele, you know. Find out what Pele did to in order to achieve. He was talented, yes. He was talented, gifted, yes. From God, yes. But he had a science. There's some things he did with his mind. He's an intelligent player, which gave him more of an advantage over everyone else. Study the game. Study the game, study the game. So this is what I bring to you, and this is what uh, I really want to emphasize that's so very important for all of your lives and the rest of your careers, and to achieve that success that you want. Everybody wants to be successful. That's how you do it.